right now. <coughs> Some concepts are important. So this concept of definition is there for you switch on this factor, so the so load is a good So so that we don't make much problem. Much problem. <laughs> Yes, now so this is another important concept that is getting to place. Yes, 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 come on, come on. Yes. Okay, so the electric flux. So this is the next concept that we have to begin with the electric flux. So, what do you mean by electric flux? This is what we are going to talk now. So, electric flux in the sense, you see, electric field we have discussed. So, electric field is uh, so what? Um, electric field in the sense, you put on to take any positive charge or negative charge. So, there will be some, yeah, there's a wind stream which gets affected by use of this field, by use of this charge. Okay, so the space which is affected by this charge can be taken as a field. But, but why? So in this electric field, complete energy gets to be modified. Okay, and if so here, this field is really a big output. Right? See, this so here, the electric kinds of force we can imagine like this, this way. And at the same time, if you have to take a negative charge, in the case of negative charge, what happens the electric field will be here. But that electric field will be really a big input. Okay, whatever it may be, positive charge, negative charge, field is field. <coughs> field is the field. But the point, so in which electric winds of force can be seen, can be experienced. Now, electric flux means uh, you you put out, <coughs> you take the electric field. Suppose you take uh, this positive pole here and a negative pair also pole here. So I will be taking one uniform electric field. Uniform electric field means all field lines will be parallel to each other. Moreover, the intensity of the electric field remains constant everywhere. So, electric fields are of two types. One is a uniform electric field, and the second one is a non uniform electric field. Right? Okay, so uniform electric field means the intensity of the electric field at any point in the field remains constant. So, that means here you take so intensity of the electric field E1, here you take the intensity of the electric field E2, so here you take the intensity of the electric field E3. So, in the case of this uniform electric field, all the electric fields will be equal. Right? So, that is called uniform electric field. Uniform electric field. Non uniform electric field means what? So, that is the electric field in which the field lines are not evenly spaced. Moreover, the intensity of the electric field is not constant everywhere. That means here you see, in the case of dipole, electric dipole, you take. So, in the case of electric dipole, the field lines will be seen like this. This is the way how the field lines get established. Okay, so this is the way. Right? Now, if you see carefully, all these field lines are not parallel with each other. And moreover, these field lines are not evenly spaced. That means if you take these charges, if the charges, electric field lines density is more. And if now you take the region which is exactly in between these two charges, the density of these electric lines of force will be less. Okay, these electric lines of force are spaced okay, far apart. And the intensity of the electric field in different points, the different points differently measure. So that is not constant. Suppose here you say this is given, and this is E2 you say, and this is E3 you say, and this is E4 you say. So practically we can see that E1 is not equal to E2, is not equal to E3, yeah, so is not equal to and so on. Understood? Okay, that is called non-uniform electric field. Non-uniform electric field. Got it? Okay. Now electric flux means if you take any electric field. In that electric field, if you take any area, through the given area, how many electric lines of force are passing? That is called electric flux. The electric flux is nothing but a number of electric lines of force passing through a given area taken in the field. Taken in the field means how to take, perpendicularly we have to take, parallelly we have to take, at some angle we have to take, yet any alignment we can take. Yet any alignments we can take. Okay, so here you see, I will be taking one uniform electric field. Okay, now in your discussion for CVT or NH. So we will be handle, so handling with the uniform electric fields only. 
right? Now this is uniform electric field. So electric field rays are moving in this way. That means that somewhere positive charge will be here, somewhere negative charge will be here. Okay, now what it means, I will be just taking some, okay, let's so here, area over here. So this is the area, this is the area, so area that is A, area that is A, right? Now through this particular area, how many field lines are passing? That gives you electric flux. Okay, but is it possible for us to count the number of lines of force? That is not practically possible. Okay, so in a way, what we say is the amount of electric field passing through this given area in the electric field. The amount of electric field which is passing through the given area can be taken as electric flux. Can be taken as electric flux. Okay, very simple. Here you see, I will give you one practical example. See here you see. Okay, so I will be taking this. Okay, so what is this? What is this? Tap. Okay, so the moment you open the tap, what happens? Water will be rushing out. Water will be rushing out. Now, so when water rushes out, when water rushes out, what it does, what it is, I will be taking one. Okay, so let's say here some area over here, some ring. Some ring. Okay, now through the ring, I want to collect water. Okay, so you will be placing the ring over here. Right now, if now you place the ring of here like this, so whatever the available space is there inside the ring, okay. So what will be okay? Let's obtain this. And that's my so here you see what is falling down like this. And if now you place a ring like this, then what happens? Maximum amount of water you can get through the ring. Water is falling like this. If now you place a ring like this, then through the ring, so how much amount of water will you get? No water. The amount of water which is passing through this ring can be taken as water flux. That can be taken as water flux. Flux means that is amount of electric field passing through this given area that is called the electric flux. Usually, this electric flux is represented symbolically by phi e. By phi e in the magnetism chapter also, magnetic flux we come across. That is phi b. Magnetic flux we come across this phi b. But why? Right? So that's why phi e stands for electric flux. Phi b stands for magnetic flux. Understood? So the amount of electric field that passes through the given area that can be taken as an electric flux. Now, what is the mathematical representation of this electric flux? Here, the intensity of the electric field there is B, you say. So the electric flux is written as the product of intensity of the electric field into so area of this. Understood? So electric flux is equal to intensity of the electric field into area. So that product can be taken as this electric flux. Okay, but here one question arises. This is the direction of the electric field, and what about the area, the plane of the area? is taken perpendicular to the field. By means of this, do you conclude that the plane of this that's a, the, the plane of this area should always be perpendicular to this? No, that would be in any direction. Now what I do is I will be taking one more situation out here. See, this is uniform electric field which is in each direction. Now what I do is I will be taking area at some angle from this. Earlier, so area I took like this. So this is the initial position of the area. Now this area I have taken this angle. Okay, from the previous position, so what is the angle over here? This is the angle that is there. Okay, so earlier position is this. Now, so what is the new position over here? Okay, so if you want to draw, so you perpendicular over here like this. This is the perpendicular like this. Okay, perpendicular. Then what happens? So this is at some side. This becomes a hypotenuse. Then, what about this? This becomes a A cos theta. This, this becomes a A cos theta. Okay, so intensity of the electric field is E over here, and this is A cos theta. Now, in this particular case, how do you write the expression for the electric flux over here? So, this is E into A cos theta. So, this becomes a, the mathematical representation of the electric flux. Mathematical <laughs> representation of electric flux. So, electric flux is written as E is the vector quantity. A cos theta, that is one of the components of area. 
Now, if at all you adopt one direction to this area, then you can write like this: the magnitude of this vector into magnitude of this vector into cos theta. What will it be? That is uh, the dot product of two vectors. So this is nothing but vector e dot vector e. Vector e dot vector e. Okay, so that's here a direction we need to adopt for this area. So what is the meaning of that? Direction. That means unit vector we need to take. Unit vector. Usually in such cases, the, that's a unit vector always lies perpendicular to the area. So whatever the unit vector that you are going to take, this is n cap. Okay, so this is the area. Now, okay, so that's a unit vector. Unit vector is always perpendicular to this. If the area is taken like this, okay, so normal will be like this. This is normal. This normal means perpendicular. This perpendicular decides the direction. Okay, so field is like this, left to right. Field is like this. Okay, I have taken the area like this. Okay, area is perpendicular to the field. Right? Now, to this area, I will be drawing one perpendicular, which is normal like this. Right? So, this normal is in the same direction of the field. Now you need to see the angle between the normal and uh, the electric field. When this normal is in the same direction of this electric field, what do you say about the angle? Zero. Okay, so if it, there's a field is like this, passing like this. Now I have taken the area like this. The plane of the area lies in the same direction of the field. Now, so if it, you take normal, normal means that you need to draw a perpendicular to this area. Okay, this becomes normal. This becomes area, uh, so field. Now, what will be the angle between the normal and the field? 90 degrees. But it, so, what about the normal that you are going to take up for this area? Ultimately, that normal represents the direction of area. In that way, in this case, area also can be taken as a vector. <coughs> that is area vector. This is called area vector. So, electric flux in this particular case is equal to vector v dot vector a. Right. Now, some special cases we come across over here. So, some special cases. Some special cases we come across. Case 1. Okay. So, when theta makes 0 degrees of angle. 0 degrees of angle in the sense. So, 0 degrees is the angle between the normal drawn and then field direction. So this is the direction of the electric field. So what about the area that you are going to take? The area has to be taken this way. Now normal or perpendicular, you need to draw. So this is M cap over here. Okay, so even so E is also in the same direction. Therefore, theta is from zero. That means whenever you take area perpendicular to the field, then the normal drawn to the area will be making zero degrees with the field. Zero degrees with the field. Okay, so this here, what is the flux equal? So the electric flux over here. So this is dA cos theta cos zero degrees. Then flux in this particular case, dA. In all the cosine values, cos zero is equal to one is only the largest value. Is only the largest value. That's why. Ah, so this represents the maximum flux. This represents the maximum flux. The maximum flux passing through that particular area. The maximum flux passing through that particular area. Right. Next phase two. Second phase I will be taking. So what do you mean by second phase over here? The area should be taken in this direction. So look at this. This is the electric field like this. The electric field is in this direction, which is uniform. Now, whatever the area that I am speaking about, the area should be taken like this. Okay, now normal means a perpendicular to the area if it be drawn. So this becomes a normal drawn to the area, and this becomes a, the direction of the electric field. Both things are okay. Perpendicular means that 90 degrees of so theta is equal to 90 degrees. That becomes a case two. That becomes a case two. That becomes a case two. Okay. Now, so what will be the flux passing through this in this case? So the flux passing through this can be written as e j into cos theta cos 90 degrees. So flux passing through this is equal to 
Flux passing through this is equal to zero. What do you have? Getting sleep. Huh? With a great difficulty, he is controlling the sleep. Huh? Okay, the eyelids are falling like anything. Okay, the great difficulty. Huh? He is opening and he is trying to look at the boat. Good, good. Huh? Okay, I appreciate your enthusiasm. Huh? Nice. Okay. So, phi e is equal to zero. Phi e is equal to zero. So, that means what do you say here? So, this becomes no flux. No flux passes. That means no flux passes. Got it? So, these are the cases. These are the two different cases. Okay. So, get any other angle. So, that particular angle's value we have made in the cosine function and we will calculate the flux. We need to calculate the flux. Okay, so in the discussion of this electrostatics, flux concept is very, very important because charge is a uniform charge distribution. Charge is a surface phenomenon. Got it? Okay, so before this concept, what about the electrical charges that we took up? All the electrical charges we consider as point charges. Got the point? Okay, later it was experimentally proved that. Charge also depends upon the dimensions of the body. The larger the dimensions the body has, the larger the amount of charge it can accommodate. It can accommodate. But it, okay, so in the way, the linear charge density, surface charge density, all the things have come. Okay, so far go there. So next concept is the charge distribution, which is called uniform charge distribution. Uniform charge distribution. So, keep the heading. Now, in this case, we will come across some equations. Charge distribution. Charge distribution. See, charge is a surface phenomenon. Charge is a surface phenomenon. But in Coulomb's time, okay, so when you place a, some charge on any body, however, the bigger the body is, what he said is you consider the entire body as a point of attention. And according to Coulomb, you can ignore the actual dimensions of the body. That's what he propounded. Okay, that's what he propounded. That is the reason why we will be taking like this. If you take one hollow sphere, if you take one more hollow sphere, okay, so there will be some charge given to this, that is a Q1. There will be some charge given to this, that is Q2. What Purum says is this is hollow. This is hollow. Okay, now even if the charges are present over here, while applying the Purum's inverse square, now what you do is uh, distance you will be taking from center to center. From center to center, we will be taking. Because, uh, okay, so that's here. However, bigger the radius is, however, the bigger, okay, so the surface area is. But the we will be ignoring and we will be taking the distance between this center to that center. Understood? Later, that hypothesis went wrong. Experimentally, it was proved that the complete charge formation is a surface phenomenon. On the surface, it spreads. And if at all, you take any solid, okay, cylinder, solid uh, sphere, this is complete solid, flash. Okay, so then what happens if you you place some charge over here, so will the charge go inside completely? No, even in this case also, on the surface only charge message. On the surface only charge message. On the point, ultimately, our two coulomb of charge, minus two coulomb of charge, where will it be? That will be on the surface only. Okay, inside the material, inside the body, never the other support, charges will not go. But the point, so what about the electric field which is exhibited by the body? That electric field will be coming from the surface only, not inside. That's what we can see mathematically in Gauss Law's power application. So if you you take one hollow sphere, inside the sphere, electric field will be zero. Inside the field, so the sphere, the electric field will be zero. That's what we have seen. But it is, so this is the charge distribution. So, by means of this, what we have to conclude is um, whatever the charge that you are provided into any body, the complete charge stays on the surface only. In that regard, you can't ignore the actual dimensions of the bodies. Okay, so if at all you take linear body, the actual length of the body you have to take because uh, as the length increases, the amount of charge you can accommodate will increase. And if you take any body having surface area, 
Okay, no thickness, only sheet, just like a sheet, area. Okay, so this here, area you have to consider because how much amount of charge that particular area is going to accommodate that completely depends upon area. More the area is, more the amount of charge the body will be able to accommodate. Lesser the area, lesser amount of charge you will push. Like this. Yes, okay, now based on this, we come across three kinds of charge distribution. One is linear charge distribution. One is linear charge distribution. Linear charge distribution. So, what do you mean by linear charge distribution? This is what we talk about now. Linear. Linear means that is lengthwise, in which area is ignored. Okay, volume is ignored. That means basically, while taking the bodies, you need to take a body which is of length dimension only. Lengthwise, just like a metallic rod, just like a string, or just like a wire, anything. Got it? Okay, even the area of cross section also has to be ignored. Only length has to be measured, the type of thing we have to take up. Okay, now look at this here, you see, this is the length, the actual length of the uh, rod is L in Right? Okay. Now on this, what I do is I will be placing some charge. How much the amount of charge can be placed? That will be directly proportional to length. And if you want to take a small length over here, so this is a DL. And on this DL, you will be placing DQ amount of charge. Okay. So the amount of charge which is being placed on this DL, so this will be directly proportional to DL. This is what the relation is. So DQ in this particular case is equal to a proportionality constant which is lambda into DL. <coughs> proportionality constant lambda into DL. Got it? Okay, so that is called a, that is called a, lambda is called a charge per unit length. So lambda is equal to DQ by DL. Charge per unit length. Charge per unit length. But it, so charge, this is called a linear charge density also this way. This is also called a linear charge density. Linear charge density. Or coefficient of linear charge distribution also we can call it. Coefficient of linear charge distribution. Okay, so lambda. So what is the so unit over here? DQ, which is here, this is a charge. So this is measured in terms of Coulomb. Coulomb per meter. Coulomb per meter. So this is some, okay. So the linear charge distribution. This is the linear charge distribution. Coulomb per meter. Coulomb per meter. Okay. The surface charge distribution, that is also known as aerial charge distribution. Surface charge distribution are Aerial charge distribution. So that is the second category that we come across. Surface charge distribution. Surface charge distribution. Surface charge distribution. Surface charge distribution. Okay, so this is also known as aerial charge distribution. Also we call this is also known as aerial charge distribution. Aerial charge distribution also we call Okay, now in this particular case, what we do is I will be taking some area over here like this. Let the area be yes. Okay, now what I do is I will be just taking some small elemental area. Let the elemental area be a DS. On this DS, you will be placing some small amount of charge which is DQ. Right? So how much amount of charge can be placed on this? Elemental area, so that is DQ, which is directly proportional to DS. Okay, so in this case, DQ is equal to a proportionality constant sigma into DS, where sigma is called a ah, so DQ by DS, that is a charge per unit area. Charge per unit area. So this is also known as some surface charge density. Surface charge density we call. Surface charge density, we call or aerial charge density, also the same. Or aerial charge density, also the same. Okay, so what is the SA units? So this BQ, so this is measured in terms of Coulomb per 
This is measured in terms of meter square. Coulomb per meter square is the SI unit of this aerial charge distribution. Coulomb per meter square is the SI unit of this aerial charge distribution. And the third category that we come across is volume charge distribution. The third category that we come across is volume charge distribution. Volume charge distribution. Volume charge distribution. Volume charge distribution. So, what do you mean by volume charge distribution? This is what we have to think of now. This is what we have to think of now. Volume charge distribution. See, so volume wise. Okay, so you will be taking one body of heaven. Okay, just like cubical body. Cubical body means volume will be there. So let the volume be. Okay, now, so some unit volume B, small elemental volume. So elemental volume, there is a DV. Elemental volume, that is a DV. Got it? Okay, now, some charge unit place over here. So what about the amount of charge that we place, that will be directly proportional to volume. That will be directly proportional to volume. Volume. <coughs> okay, so take you in this particular case. Is equal to your proportionality constant rho into the unit. Okay, so rho in this particular case is equal to so dq by dv. And what do you mean by dq by dv? Charge per unit volume. Charge per unit volume. Okay, charge per unit volume. So this is um, uh, rho is called rho is called uh, so volume charge density we call. Volume charge density. Okay, so what is the SI unit? The SI unit is a Coulomb per meter cube. So this is what the SI unit of this volume charge density. While listening to this volume charge density, are you getting any doubts? Do you feel anything that you need to ask a doubt? Yes. What about the things I taught earlier? What about the thing that I taught in volume charge distribution? By means of those two things, are you getting rid of? Are you getting rid of? You have to get. If at all, you are following my each and every sentence that I am speaking, immediately you have to start in here. I was waiting, but you no know one. Huh? Has stopped me. Ah, getting rid of? Getting rid of? Ah, yes, Akresha. Ah, charge, surface. Ah, charge is the surface phenomenon. Ah. Okay, so what was I telling you? That is the point that you have to ask me, but you are not asking. And what doubt you have to ask? That also I have to tell. I have to make you ask, then I have to tell. Huh? What do you have? I have to make you ask, then I have to tell. Huh? Okay, you ask me, you please ask me this, I will tell. You please ask, ask us that, then I will tell. Huh? Huh? Okay. What do you have? Okay, so this is here you see before this concept, what was I telling? Surface charge density. Surface charge density in the sense uh, you take any body, so when you start charging the body, electrifying the body, the complete charge will be residing on the top surface only. That means if at all you take surface area, that's enough. And one more thing I, I told, very strongly I told, charges will not enter into the body. So did I use this word? Okay, but volume means what? You have to go into the body. As long as you are on the surface, okay, even for this cube, surface area will be happy. Total surface area, 6s yes, square, that you have to take. Volume need not be taken. If at all, this is, uh, ah, so this is here, so volume phenomena. Got the point? Okay, so that means what I am telling is, uh, okay, so volume we have to take. So this is here, what is this? 
and what about the statements that i told earlier now this is contradicting that this is contradicting okay what is that justification even this thing also happens okay where in which cases what about the body that you are going to take up if the body is a conducting material in the case of conducting material what happens the moment you give some charge the complete charge is taken inside the charges will be flowing inside okay clearly where can we see this in the case of dielectrics usually dielectrics between the two plates of a capacitor will be of insulators but some others here so we had some questions also in the previous question papers what happens when the dielectric is of conducting material okay so in what way the capacitance will get affected okay so this type of questions we had already in the so previous sessions got it so whenever you place any conducting material in between the two plates then the capacitance increases the probably because Ah, so what about the charges which are presented? Those charges are taken by the body. Those charges will be flowing into the body. Understood? So inside the atoms, okay. So electrons, all the things. So electronic motion will begin. Are you getting me point? Okay. So that's a, so that is the situation. If at all you take, okay. So insulating bodies, then the charges are present on the top surface. And what is that? Glass rod rubbed with the silk cloth. Glass rod acquires a positive charge. Silk cloth acquires a negative charge. Suppose this is glass rod imagine. And if I rub this glass rod by means of silk cloth, okay, so positive charge will be developed. The complete positive charge will remain only on the surface because glass is insulated. Okay, so since positive charges are present over here. Okay, and gold leaf electroscope. Okay, from the gold leaf electroscope, okay, this is an arm. And if I bring and if I keep it in contact, whatever the gold leaves are there, then so there is an indication of the electrification. Are you getting a point? Okay, so if you don't take any conducting material, you take one iron rod. This is iron rod. Understood? Okay, so this is in the case of iron rod, if you start this rubbing the hex by means of silk cloth or woolen cloth or whatever it may be, in that case also charges may be formed, but the charges will not be seen if you touch. Okay, so this is the bar of the gold leaf scope, the gold leaves inside, okay, inside the jaw. So they will let you know. They will not touch. Means so there, so did the complete charge that you have provided go? Oh, the charges went inside the body. And what about the charges that you are giving? The charges are taken, are absorbed by the body. Inside the body, the charges will be flowing. So that is the nature of conducting material. But it is like this. Usually, while discussing about the electric flux, the electric field, charge distribution, all the things, we will be dealing with the insulating bodies, glass sphere, like that we begin our discussion. But again, like this. Okay, so this is something about the charge distributions. Come on, come on, please make a note of it. After this, we will be coming across an important, very, very important concept that is Gauss law. That is Gauss law. Okay, so Gauss law governs these two things one is electric flux, and the second one is uniform charge distribution. Okay, electric flux and uniform charge distribution. Okay, so by combining these two concepts, we will be dealing with the Gauss law. Okay, Gauss law. Actually, Gauss, he was a very, very famous mathematician. His full name is Carl Frederick. Carl Frederick Gauss. Carl Frederick Gauss. So there is a film, Carl Frederick Gauss. Okay, very legendary mathematician. Okay, even his physics explanations will be all the highly mathematics treatments. Okay, full of calculus and other things. Full of mathematics. Okay, there's a here, Carl. Actually, this is a Carl. Okay, so there is one operator, there's one operator that's a he created. So there is a Dell operator. So in mathematics, in calculus, he is a creator. Understood? So the del, so that del we will be even using for so potential gradient and other things. Potential gradient and other things. 
Let it go. Thank us. Okay. Now, God's love. God's love. So, what does God's love teach? What is the thing that you are going to ultimately find out by using this God's law? Okay, so by using this God's law, ultimately we will be calculating the electric flux. What electric flux? Total electric flux. And because according to the shape of the body, the charge distribution will be present. Okay, so if you take any shape of the body with any charge distribution, what is the total amount of flux the body exhibit, uh, exhibits? So that is calculated by cos law. By means of this cos law, intensity of electric field we will be calculating for different shaped bodies. Not only that, even electrostatic potential also we will be calculating by using this cos law. But the point? Okay, so cos law statements. Can anyone tell? Do anyone remember? Perhaps you must have studied for the sake of your board examinations. We studied, sir. We worked hard and like anything. The moment the Karnataka government announced that board examinations got cancelled, everything got cancelled. Huh? You ever get it? Yes or no? The moment the announcement came out huh, from the government, okay, so what about the strong subject which got the root here? Everything came out. Yes or no? Yes or no? Okay, now just give it a few. Huh? Subject various in which corner? In which corner? Okay, no. No traces. No traces. Okay, ah, anybody? Can anybody, can, can anybody say? Kasla? Wonderful. Big pass. Okay. Yes, good okay. day. Uh, you see, some jiggles in there. Some jiggles. Uh, okay, that is a jiggle in the last page. That is a jiggle in the last page. Okay. Got it? Okay. Good, very good. Okay. The right start. I answer, sir. Okay, exact statements. Absolutely correct. I appreciate you. What's your name? Jiggle? Huh? Mahantesh. Jiggle Mahantesh. Good, very good. Jiggle Mahantesh. Okay, right. Okay, so here what is the statement you know that is absolutely correct. If you can't take any body, the total amount of flux passing through the body, through this passing through any closed surface is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times the net charge present on the body. Now, here we will be using one more word which is net charge. Okay, so what do you mean by net charge over here? See, if you can't take any system, I will take one system over here. Okay, so look at this here you see. So this is a plus 10 microvolt I will be taking, and this is a minus 5 microvolt I am taking, and here plus 6 microvolt I am taking, and this is a minus 12 microvolt I am taking, like that at different types of okay, charges can be taken in a system. So there will be some collection of so many charges of different natures we can take. Net charge means a charge is a scalar. Is it a scalar or vector? Scalar. Okay, so the algebraic sum of all these charges we need to take. Understood? Okay, so net charge in this particular case, Q net is equal to, okay, so 10 microcoulomb minus 12 minus microcoulomb addition, algebraic addition, okay, minus 2, minus 2, minus 5, minus 7, minus 7 plus 6, minus 1, minus 1 microcoulomb, minus 1 microcoulomb. So minus 1 microcoulomb will become the net charge. Understand? So that is called the so net charge. Okay. So if you now you take any closed surface, you take any closed surface over here, like this, this is the closed surface over here. Of any shape. Of any shape. Why did you draw like this? Ah, can't you draw like this here? Ah, like this. Why can't you draw so, 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 so like this? Ah. Okay. So it's not that I cannot draw like this. Okay. Why I have taken like this means whatever the body that you are going to take up, that would be of any shape, regular, irregular, anything. Got the point? Okay. Now, what about the electric lines of force that are passing through this? Whatever the electric lines of force that are passing through this. Okay. So now, this all these electric lines of force. Ah, so the total electric lines of force, the number you put on the day, that becomes a fine total. So that is a total electric flux 
passing through the surface, frozen the surface. That is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times the net charge associated with that. This is called cross law. That is called cross law. Understood? Okay. Now, some applications we have taken. In those applications, we will come across some problems. Okay. So, applications are cross law. Come on, come on, note down. Note it down. Okay. So, applications of cross law. Applications of gas law. Applications of gas. Gas law. Applications of gas law. Okay. Applications of gas law. Right. The first one is determining the intensity of electric field and potential due to a linear conductor. Okay. So look at this. This will be the first determining. Intensity of electric field and potential, electric and potential field, due to due to a linear conductor, due to a linear conductor. Okay, so usage of infinite length or finite length, infinite length, infinite length. Right? So infinite length. So linear conductor we will take. So for that conductor, so this. Intensity of electric field and uh, potential, both the things to be to measure, right? Okay, so look at this here. You see, I will be taking one more like this. Means, right? This is infinitely long, infinitely long. Imagine now what I do is I will be just giving some charge, okay? So I will be giving positive charge, for example, and then you also begin take one more. I will be giving positive charge or like this. Okay, the moment I place the positive charge over here, what happens? Charge distribution all over the length, the charge gets distributed uniformly. Got it? Now, the electric field will be there. So, what will be the electric field? Always, the electric field will be radially outward. Always, the electric field will be radially outward. This is the electric field. This is the way how the electric field spreads. This is the way how the electric field spreads. Okay, now from this, okay, so linear conductor, I will be just taking one particular point of here, which is in instance R. Now, by intention is due to this infinitely long straight conductor, intensity of the electric field at that particular point, how much we need to calculate. And for that purpose, what do we do? For that purpose, what do we do? That, so the procedure in the gas law is one surface we need to imagine, which is called Gaussian surface. Gaussian surface we need to imagine. Okay, so the second thing is according to this radius. Okay, so we need to imagine one surface of the radius. This is the surface. Usually, the shape of the surface will be according to the shape of this charged body that we are going to take like this. Okay. So that's here. So now what is the shape of this Gaussian surface? What is the shape of this Gaussian surface? Cylindrical. Okay, so this becomes a cylindrical Gaussian surface. Cylindrical Gaussian surface. Okay. Cylindrical Gaussian surface. The surface is called Gaussian surface. Understood? The surface is known as Gaussian surface. Cylindrical Gaussian surface. Now, in a cylinder, how many things do we come across? How many possible okay, things do we come across? Okay, see here, I will show you. Okay, so look at this again. You see, I will be just taking one cylinder over here like this. I will be taking the cylinder over here like this. Okay, so whatever, whatever this thing, there is a here, you see, whatever the charge of conductor we have taken, so this is the charge of conductor. And this is the Gaussian surface. Okay, now, so this is due to this charge conductor, electric kinds of force are radially outward. Means this side, this side, this side, this side, this side, everywhere, three dimensionally. Got the point? Now, this is taken like this. Okay, so when it is taken inside the cylindrical structure, what happens? Whatever the electric kinds of force which are coming out, all those electric kinds of force will be passing through this Gaussian surface. 
Okay, so when the lines of force are passing through this Cauchy surface, what are the surfaces which are affected by these lines of force? For that, the possible surfaces you need to take. So for a cylinder, so how many possible surfaces are there? This top circular portion, this is one surface. This sideboard, lateral, curvilinear, this is one surface. And bottom, okay, one circular region. How many regions are there? Only three regions. Top circular region, bottom circular region, and the curvilinear region. And what we have to do is, on this top, you need to take one unit area, some area, elemental area. Some elemental area you will be taking on the top surface. Some elemental area you will be taking on this curvilinear portion. Some elemental area you will be taking on the bottom. Like that, what about the Gaussian surface you are going to imagine, which covers the charged body, all possible regions, all possible surfaces we have to find out. And all possible surfaces, elemental areas we have to take. Through all those elemental areas, how much amount of flux, which is called elemental flux. Okay, so all those elemental fluxes we need to calculate. Okay, now the sum of all those elemental fluxes we have to calculate. Then we need to go for integration. Then the total flux will We need to go for integration. Okay, <clears throat> now in doing, so, in doing so, in doing so, okay, so there will be some techniques. What are they? The very first one is the intensity of electric field you have to find out. Then potential. Got it? Okay. Now, for the purpose, what I do is this is the actual point where you are going to find out the intensity of electric field. Yes. Okay. Now, this is one possible area, top surface, circular. Okay. On this circular portion of the area, I am going to take up which is in this one. Okay. On this curvilinear portion, one elemental area you are going to take up. This is, this is the elemental area which is DST. Why I am telling this? In the sense, even while solving the problems, this is all the technique that we are going to follow. Because there, there's always, don't expect that, always standard shapes will be asked. Some irregular, okay, shaped body can be asked. Understood? In such cases, this is the procedure that you are going to follow, even while solving the problems. Okay, so the third possible area is the bottom. Okay, so this is a, that's a circular portion. Now here, one more possible, okay. So this is the elemental area we have to take, that is a DS3. Okay, now on this cylindrical surface, on this cylindrical Gaussian surface, three possible regions I have taken. So do you see only these three or any more? Are any more possible areas? Only these three, that's all. Okay, now if you take the elemental area, which is DS1, what is the flux passing through this DS1? This is what we have to think of now. So for that purpose, normal we have to draw. So what is a normal? This is the normal drawn to this, which is level one cap. And what is the field direction? The field direction is this. And what is the angle between these two things? 90 degrees. Okay, now what is the flux passing through this? Now, First flux passing through this DS1 alone, we have to take because DS1 is one area, elemental area. Okay, flux passing through DS1, we need to find it. Okay, so that is a phi. Okay, so this is phi. Okay, so there's a one I say phi one. Right? Okay, so what is the formula? So vector E dot vector DS1. Okay, so phi one is equal to E into ds1 into cos theta cos 90 degrees. Okay, so what is the value of cos 90? Zero. Everything is zero. That means uh, no flux passes through ds1 area. Okay, so because uh, that ds1 area has been taken in the same direction of the electric field, so no flux passes through ds1. Okay, now flux passing through ds2. Okay, now coming to DS2. So, what is the normal drawn to this DS2 area? This is the normal drawn to this through this DS2 area. And what is the direction of the electric field? If the direction of the electric field is also in the same, that is E, the term E. Understand? Now, so flux passing through this DS2. 
Okay, so through this DS2, so through this DS2, flux passing through this DS2, I say five pieces. Okay, so vector E dot vector DS2. Okay, so this becomes E into DS2 into cos zero degrees because both things are in the same direction. See there, both things are in the same direction. Okay, so cos zero is fine. So this becomes a D into DS2. So this is the value of three. Right now, so take the third possible area. Okay, so for this third possible area, so this normal has to be drawn in this way. So this is then three cap. But what is the field direction? The field direction is this way. This is the field. And what is the area? What is the angle between the two things? That is 90 degrees. Okay, now the flux passing through BS3. Phi BS3. So how do you write? So there is a phi 3 we will be taking that. So there is a D into BS3 vector E dot vector BS3. So phi 3 in this particular case. So this is D BS3 into cos 90 degrees. Cos 90 is 0. Therefore, given this phi 3 is also equal to 0. So what about the three possible elemental areas that we have imagined on the entire Gauss Gaussian surface? The fluxes are in this way. What is the total elemental flux? Okay. So total elemental flux we need to calculate. Total elemental flux we need to calculate. That is the next stage. So that is D phi is equal to so phi one plus phi two plus phi three. So d phi is equal to what do you say? Zero plus e into d s two plus zero. So this is d phi is equal to e into d s two. That is the total flux. Remember the flux. Now phi total we need to calculate. Phi total. Phi total. Okay. So integral d phi surface integral. Otherwise life is difficult. Surface integral symbol. Okay, surface integral symbol. Okay, so phi total in this particular case. Okay, so surface integral d phi. So that is e into d s two. E is constant because uniform directed field. So e into surface integral d s two. D s two means what part? That is a curvilinear portion. And what do you say about the area of this cur 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 curvilinear area? Curvilinear. That is a lateral area. Lateral surface area, lateral surface area, ninth class, mensuration chapter, geometry, 2 pi r into L. Okay, so 2 pi r into L. Ninth class, this ninth class. Before the Vatan Prize, to do the What do you have? Ninth class. In fact, I forgot whether I studied ninth class. From the ninth class, you were asking. What is the thing that you are asking? Huh? Meaningless. Huh? What are you? Okay, so 2 pi r into l. 2 pi r into l. Right? Okay, by Gauss law, what do you say? By Gauss law. Huh? By Gauss law. Here I am ready. It's a combination. Okay, so pi total. Pi total is equal to the net charge divided by epsilon charge. Net charge divided by epsilon naught. So, what is the total charge of here? Total flux, so a flux over here. Ah, so, this is 2 pi r into L. This is what we calculated. So, Q by epsilon naught. Therefore, so E is equal to Q by 2 pi ah, epsilon naught or into L. So, this is one representation that we are going to use for Gauss law in terms of charge. Sometimes we represent the same equation in terms of linear charge density. Linear charge density. We know that Q is equal to lambda into L. Why? So 2 pi r, okay, 2 pi epsilon naught r into L. These two things we can consider. Therefore, E is equal to lambda by. 2 pi epsilon naught r. So, this is the intensity of the electric field due to an infinitely long straight conductor. Both the representations you need to remember because we will be using both.
in this workout you need to remember you need to understand the mechanism how we have taken okay so elemental areas we have to take are all possible areas first of all we have to identify we have to locate all the possible areas on each and every possible surface the elemental areas we have to Yes, over. So, this is something about the first application of gas law in which we will be calculating the intensity of the electric field. You see, this is the question 100 problems. So, Q by 2 by epsilon naught RA. So, the one of the questions we had, that option. Did you remember? I told you, this is the first application of gas law. This one. I'm sure. Yes. Yes, the second application we need to take up. In the second application, what do we do? We will be taking one surface. Okay, having some area. Having some area. Right, can I hear this? That part. Huh? Okay, this part can I hear this? Okay, now look at this sir. Determining the, uh, wait, 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 not over. This discussion is not over. So, intensity of the electric field only we have calculated. But what about the potential? Potential, potential we have calculated on. Okay, estimating the potential by using this. So we know that ah, potential we need to calculate now. Now potential. Electrostatic potential. Okay, so we know that intensity of the electric field is nothing but negative potential gradient minus dv by dr. Minus dv by dr. Negative potential gradient. Negative potential gradient. Okay, so therefore dv in this case is equal to minus v into dr. Minus v into dr. Okay, so dv ah, so is equal to minus v v there. Okay, so what do we get? Lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught r into dr. Okay, so now for total potential, what do we have to calculate? So integral. So dv dash r. Get the distance r we need to integrate. Total length r. Okay, so the potential in this case integral minus lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught r into dr. Okay, so the total potential is equal to lambda minus lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught integral. 1 by r into dr f r. Okay, so the total potential now in this particular case, how do you write? Minus lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught log r. Log r. Okay, to the base e plus c. Where c is integral constant. Integration constant. Okay, very very important equations. Those equations only we will be using by solving the problems. Okay, minus lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught log r to the base e. Log r to the base e plus integration constant. Integration constant. This is what potential in this case. Okay, right. Now coming to the second application. So what do we do in the second application of this process? Surface. The body is having only surface area we will be taking and we will be estimating both intensity of electric field as well as potential. 
Okay, so application two, second application. Okay, so determine. Determine intensity of the electric field and the electrostatic potential due to due to a surface. Due to a surface. Due to a surface. So this is what we need to discuss now. Okay, so what we so what we do is we will taking one surface of this, one sheet, one metallic sheet of any shape, square shape, rectangular shape, circular shape, anything, anything we will be doing. Right? Okay. Now the surface area. Okay, so two types of areas we come across. Okay, so this is the surface, sir. this side area, that surface area will be. Yes or no? So this side capital S, yes, I say. So back side also capital S yes, will be right. Okay, now yes is the surface area. Right? Now I will be providing some charge. Okay, so can we understand uh, so conventionally I will be taking positive charge? Positive charge has been given like this. Positive charge has been given like this. Positive charge has been given like this. Positive charge has been given. Therefore, what happens? The electric kinds of force will be radially outward in this Okay, even back side also, the charge spreading will be there now. Okay, see, this is the surface. When I put some charge, positive charge over here, so this side electric field will be there. Even back side also electric field will be there. Either sides. Okay, this side electric field, this side electric field. Understood? Okay, in the way, even back side also the electric field comes like this. Even back side also the electric field comes like this. Right? Now, whatever the intensity of the electric field we are going to discuss, that can be found. Okay, that can be calculated. So, either this, the person, both the sides. Right? What I do is, I will be just taking one. Point of here is what is this point? Take this point, I am going to find out the intensity of the electric field. Now you will be imagining one Gaussian surface. Now, in this case, what kind of Gaussian surface do I imagine? Cylindrical Gaussian surface, I will be imagining that cylindrical Gaussian surface, how like this it passes. So, this is a cylindrical Gaussian surface over here. Okay, so this is the Gaussian surface that I have taken this side. Even this cylinder, you imagine that the cylinder, okay, so is passing through this like this. Okay, you just made a hole, okay, through the hole, okay, you pass this cylinder like that you imagine. Okay, now, ah, so this is caution surface, cylindrical caution surface. Right, now on the cylindrical caution surface, what are the possible areas that you can imagine? The first possible area in this case is the S1, where here are the circular portion. This is one circular portion, so this is the S1. And another possible area on this curvilinear portion is the S2. Another possible area, this is a circular portion, which is the S3. This is a DS3. This is a DS3. Next, another possible area. That you can make that is on this linear portion, which is a DS4. Okay, so this side two possible elemental areas, back side two possible elemental areas. Right now, DS1 you take. Okay, so for this DS1, ah, so what is the normal ground to this? This is the normal ground. So this is M1 cap. And what will be the direction of the electric field? The direction of the electric field also will be in the same direction, which is E of the air. E, that is uniform. That's why for every case, I will be using E only. Uniform electric field gets established from this metallic sheet, from the surface. Okay, now coming to, okay, so elemental area, elemental flux passing through this elemental area, DS1. So that is D5, I see. D5 means through DS1, that is elemental flux. Okay, so by definition, vector E dot vector DS1. Okay. So that is this is E, DS1 cos theta. So what is theta? What is theta? 
What is theta? Zero. Because both of these are coming to be in the same direction. Therefore, E ds1 cos zero. So it is nothing but E ds1. This is the first elemental. This is the first elemental okay, flux. The second elemental flux, which is through ds2 period calculate. So there is a d phi 2. So how do you take? So this is vector E, dot vector ds2. Okay, so this d phi 2, how do you calculate? So this is E, so ds2. Okay, so here, there's a here, normal prompt is that this would be like this. So this is d to cap. Okay, so here, so here, so intensity of the and what will be the angle between the students is 90 degrees. So cos 90, so which is 0, so D phi 2. That means through the elemental area, ds 2 flux passing through is 0. Through the elemental area, ds 2 flux passing is 0. Now, so the third elemental area I will take in, flux passing through third elemental area, D phi 3 is equal to vector E dot vector ds 3. Now, so what is a normal drawn to this? This is the normal drawn to this ds3. And what is the index? So direction of electric field, same direction. Right? So theta becomes zero. Okay, so when you expand, so this dot product, so d phi 3 is equal to d, so e ds3 into cos zero, that is one. So this will be the element of flex passing through ds3. Next, so the elemental flux passing through the third, fourth possible area, so which is V54. So vector E dot DS4 vector. The pencil DS4 is here. Right? You need to draw one perpendicular, which is called normal, which is N4 cap. N4 cap. Okay, so now the direction of the electric field is this. There is a perpendicular. The pencil 90 degrees and 90 degrees. Okay, so D54 in this particular case E into DS4, okay, into zero because cos 9 is zero. Therefore, D54 is equal to zero. Now, how do you say about the total elemental flux? The total elemental flux. So there is a D51 plus D52 plus D53 plus D54. So on this Gaussian surface, how many possible areas you have imagined it? The summation of all those possible areas we need to take. The summation of all those possible areas we need to take. Therefore, in this case, D5 is equal to D51. So that is E into DS1. D52 is 0. D53 E into DS3 plus 0. Okay, so this is D5 is equal to E into D S1 plus D S3. Now, find total. Total flux we need to calculate. Integral of D5. What integral? Surface integral. Surface integral we need to take. Okay, so the find total, which is the total flux passing through that. Surface integral E into D S1 plus D S2. Okay, so phi total in this particular case, how do you say? So this is E surface integral ds1 plus surface integral ds2. Therefore, so phi total in this particular case, E into, okay, surface integral ds1 means that's the total available surface area on one face. That is this. The total available surface area on the back side, that is this, yes. Okay, so phi total in this particular case, what do you say? E into this. By Gauss law, by Gauss law, ah, so this total flux linked with the surface is equal to Q by epsilon naught. Q by epsilon naught. By okay, now this total flux E into 2S yes, is equal to Q by epsilon naught. Therefore, intensity of the electric field is equal to Q by 2 epsilon naught into E. This is the representation of intensity of the electric field in terms of 
charge. Now, surface charge density sometimes we will be using. And what is the surface charge density? So E is equal to sigma MBS. That is the two epsilon naught MBS. These two things will get cancelled. Therefore, so E is equal to sigma by two epsilon naught. So this is another representation. These two representations you have to keep in mind. These two representations we will be using while solving the problems according to data, given data. Yes, come on, please make it faster. Yes, over. Right. Now, <clears throat> the third application also we will be discussing. Okay, now the time is for today. So, if I can discuss the third application, the time will be for that. By 4 30, we will take a break. Okay, 4 30, we will take a break. 5 minutes or 10 minutes. Then, then we can also be half ready. Okay, one more hour or one and a half hour. Okay. Uh -huh. You have to sleep. Huh? <laughs> something. You are telling something. Tell me a minute. I can't understand. Phone you have watching. Huh? Uh -huh. You don't want to break. Continue. <laughs> okay. See, it is here by seeing me, by seeing me constantly and continuously, and even those people are becoming stronger. That's the rush. Good. Yes. Yes. Right. Now, the third application we have to take. The third application we have to take. Right. Okay. Now, in the third application, what I do is I will take one hollow sphere, spherical shell. Shell. Shell means hollow. Okay. Can I get this? Okay. Thanks. What gun? I have. Ah, sorry. Potential effort. Potential effort. <laughs> See, why this I will be forgetting? So I have to take this. My own always will be wherever I go. Ah, he will be running. Ah, that is not you for God. Okay. So that's here, uh, in the pictures you must have seen. What is that? Uh, that's it. So whenever John C. Ritchie by goes for war, okay, so she used to carry her son also. But why? Like that, I have to carry him. So this kind of view. So he will be reminding. Good. Thank you, Mayor. Huh? Really, this, I forgot this. Okay, potential we have time. Potential we have time. So we know that. Right. Potential. 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 Okay, so here you see we know that so the intensity of electric field is nothing but the negative gradient of potential. Negative gradient of potential, potential gradient. Okay, therefore, so dv is equal to minus e into dr. Okay, so e value is here. 
right? So B V is equal to minus V sigma by two epsilon naught into B. Right? Now for total potential combustion medium, for total potential combustion medium, what should we do to get the total potential? We should take break. We should take break. What should we do then? Integration. Okay. So integral b v at what level? Get the Get the distance up. Okay. Now b is equal to integral minus sigma by two epsilon naught b r. Get the distance. Up. Okay. So here b is equal to minus sigma by two epsilon naught. Yes. Ah. Ah, plus C. This is R. R plus C. So this is the equation for potential. This is the equation for potential. This is the equation for potential. Minus sigma by two epsilon naught R. But it is So this is the second application. Now, the third application we need to deal with. The third application is nothing but the third application is nothing but a hollow spherical shell. So, we will take charged shell, charged spherical shell, charged spherical shell, charged spherical shell, charged spherical shell. Right. Okay, so charge is spherical so I will take okay. Okay, shell means it is hollow. Right? Let the radius of the shell be capital R. Okay? Radius of the shell be capital R. Now what I do is I will be placing some charge. Let positive charge be given this. Then the electric field will be radially outward. Okay. Nice. Nice. Okay. Now, due to this shell, I will be taking one point outside. Now, my intention is to get the point P, which is get a distance R, smaller. Get a distance smaller. I want to find out the intensity of the electric field. For that, what should I do? For that, what should I do? What yeah, Jewel? Huh? What should I do? Jewel Mahandesh. What should I do? P is the point. P is the point where I need to find out the intensity of the electric field. For that, what should I do? You do whatever you want, sir. <laughs> you do whatever you want, sir. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, no. We can't say anything. No, because you are here that you yeah, whatever you want, you can. Huh? You want wish. Huh? What do you have? Huh? Ah, sir. You want wish anything? Right? <laughs> correct. Correct. Okay. So, okay. Here, yeah, there, there is a saying in English. Dogs. Seldom bark. Okay, they bite. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So the pins are here. That's a he seldom talks. He seldom talks. Means okay. He does speak, but if he speaks, the shoots are him. Okay. Good. Very good. Okay. Yes. Now we have the equation one Gaussian surface. One Gaussian surface. Okay. What kind of Gaussian surface? Even this Gaussian surface also spherical. Yes, spherical Gaussian surface. Now you see on the spherical Gaussian surface, how many possible areas it will be taken? Uh, there is no sphere here. Uh, before all I want to show you. Okay. Uh, how many? Okay, so look at this here. You see, just you try to imagine spherical surface. This is the spherical surface match. The actual sphere means ball, just like a ball. Okay, but ball is not available over here. So this surface is just imagine, right? Imagine. 
Okay, so if you take this vector surface, sir, how many possible areas can be taken? How many types of possible surfaces? Elemental areas. Only one, because here you see, if at all you take one elemental area, right? If at all you draw, okay, so perpendicular, that will be larger to the surface. And if at all you imagine one tangent, so the tangent perpendicular. Okay, now if at all you imagine over here, one more, okay, elemental area, even here also, so the tangent perpendicular. Even if you imagine over here, to the tangent, this perpendicular. Is that wrong? Okay, that means whatever the element of area you take on the concrete surface, that will be of same type. Different types of element of areas we can't have. Is that wrong? Okay, now on this concrete, so partial surface, what I do is I will be just taking it, so one element of area which is this. Only one element of area. That, if at all you integrate, you will be getting the total area, surface area. Okay, now, so this is, here, this is the element of area. Now, normal quantities. Okay, so this is the normal quantities. So, and what about the direction of the electric field? In the electric field, also, this is the same direction. This is okay, so vector E, so there is electric field and normal, both the things are in the same direction. So, theta is equal to this. The elemental flux passing through this, how much? So this is vector E dot vector Ds. Okay, I'm opening this. What do you get? E Vs cos zero degrees. So this is V5. So this is equal to E into this. Now for total flux, what do we do? We will be integrating. Okay, so the total flux phi total is equal to. Okay, so integral. What integral? Surface integral. So this is V5. So, surface integral, this is E into ds. E into ds. So, E is intensity of the electric field. This is ds. Now, ds is where? On the partial surface. Now, integral ds means what? The total surface area on that Gaussian surface. What is it? the total surface area on the Gaussian surface? On the Gaussian surface. Yes, come on. So this becomes 4 pi, which are capital R, small r, small r square, because small r is the radius of Gaussian surface. Small r is the radius of the Gaussian surface. Gaussian surface. Okay. Understood? Okay. Now, so by glass law, phi total is equal to Q by epsilon large. Q by epsilon large. Okay, so phi total, phi total in this particular case. Okay, so there is E into 4 pi small r square is equal to Q by epsilon large. Okay, so E is equal to Q by 4 pi epsilon large r square. Understood? But what is Q? Sigma into surface area of the body four pi Okay, so this is different you write G is equal to sigma four pi r square divided by four pi epsilon notch r square four pi four pi. So G is equal to sigma by epsilon notch r square by r square. So this is what intensity of the now what do we have to do, Mayur? Potential we have to calculate. Potential we need to calculate. Okay, so potential. Potential. Okay, so we know that intensity of the electric field is the negative gradient of potential. Negative gradient of potential. Okay, so dv is equal to minus e into vr. Okay. So dv in this case minus sigma by epsilon notch r square by r square into dr. Right? So in this case dv is equal to ah. So this we need to find out the total potential. For that we need to go for the integration. Integral dv in the distance r. Get the distance r. So v in this particular case and integral minus sigma by epsilon notch. R square by R square dr. So V is equal to minus sigma R square 
by epsilon naught integral now yeah. integral 1 by r square dr so that is minus 1 by r plus integral constant okay so this minus is coming out it becomes a plus the final representation i am writing over here so sigma r square by epsilon naught r plus integral constant this is what the potential is this is what the potential is okay come on come on make a note of it Okay, now we are going to take a break and shall I switch off this sensor for some time? Or shall I leave it like this? You sit up. But is there any option for pause? Otherwise, you end it, no problem. Again, we will start.